Before I start the sermon today, I want to make a special note on the scripture that we're going to read. It is a scripture that's often been politicized around a particular political issue. Now, when this scripture was written, this particular political issue was non-existent. And in its original context, it didn't really speak to this issue. And for thousands of years, it was read without this one particular issue in mind. Today, I'm going to speak on its original context and that original issue. I'm going to speak to our connection as a church with our call and Jeremiah's call to serve God too, the vision that God had for Jeremiah, Jeremiah's life. So as we read this scripture, I want you to take it out of any modern context that you may know for it. It's not saying that issue is not important, but that's just not the issue we're talking about today. And see what this scripture says about our call as a church. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 10, uh, 4 through 10. Give me one second here. Uh, Technology is not being my friend. Okay. What? No. I, I read off the screen. Okay. <laughs> the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart and anointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said to you, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go wherever I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I anoint you, appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now my tablet's not working for me today, so I'm going to go ahead and put it over here. But in this scripture, you see Jeremiah makes an introduction, right? This is the very first intro into the book of Jeremiah. Now, the book of Jeremiah is interesting because it's the longest book in the Bible by word count. It has over 33,000 words in the Hebrew language. That's a large book. Now, this book in particular covers the life of Jeremiah. And this is the introduction to Jeremiah's life. Now, God is talking to Jeremiah as an adult. He is an adult man here, but he's talking about his life before he was born. Jeremiah was given a special call. There was a special vision for Jeremiah's life. Now, Jeremiah is going to be surrounded by many people. The people around him might do good things. They might do godly things, but they won't do what Jeremiah does. Jeremiah is special. Jeremiah has a special vision for his life. Our church is like many organizations, right? Our church is similar to social clubs. Um, we meet together, we have social activities, uh, we do events. What separates Hurstbourne Christian Church from Hurstbourne Country Club? Uh, what makes us different? Why are we not the Kawinas Club, uh, the Masons, the Rotary Club, all of those other organizations? What makes our church a church? What makes us special? What do we do that's different? In part, we work with God's love. We have a vision for our lives. Now, these surveys 
are the basis, the start of our vision. A plan for what we will do in the future, something to move forward from this moment. But it's not just other organizations that we have to contend with. I mean, what sets Hurstbourne Christian Church apart from other churches here? I mean, just in this subdivision, there's many churches. There's Hurstbourne Baptist Church right over there. There's a Lutheran church down the street and a Latter-day Saints church over there. What makes Hurstbourne Christian Church, our church, special? What is the vision that we have? There's a lot of churches that you see um, that try to be very similar. You, you see churches that start to grow because they put a rock band up in the front of their sanctuary, right? So then you look at all the other churches in the area, and all of a sudden, they all have rock bands and fog machines, too. <laughs> Every church is like, well, we're just going to copy whatever they did, and, and we'll do it, and we'll grow just like they did. But it doesn't work, uh, because doing what someone else did just makes you a, a copy of them. It doesn't make you different. We have to find what makes us special. What is the vision for Hurstborn Christian Church? What is our unique call? Now, I love pizza. Pizza is one of my favorite things. Just last night, I had a big, nice slice of pizza from the post. I was talking to my wife about it still this morning. <laughs> I love New York pizza. I love that nice, thin, crispy crust. Honestly, I like it with just cheese on top, nothing else. But if I went to Chicago, I probably wouldn't walk in and order a nice, thin pizza, right? I wouldn't order that New York-style pizza in Chicago. I would get a Chicago deep dish, right? It's what they're known for. And if, I went to, and if I went to New York, I likewise wouldn't order that same slice of Chicago deep dish pizza. I just wouldn't. Each one has their own specialty, something they're good at. And our church does too. Our church has a special sauce, a special ingredient that makes us not alike other churches, but different and unique. Something that we had from the moment we were formed. Our church started in a house, and many of our members remember that house. And from that house, we grew into this congregation. Since the very beginning of our church, we welcomed all people to this table. In fact, we let men and women serve as elders at this table since the very beginning. That is something that sets us apart, something that makes us unique, that makes us different. Those are what we're looking for here. Now, these surveys that we have in front of us are not the end of our five-year plan. Yes, it's the end of our five years from now sermon series, but it's not the end of what we're doing here. In fact, it's just the very beginning. Because from these surveys, we're going to get a vision committee together, a group of people to come and figure out that five-year plan for our church. In particular, they're going to come up with two statements. One is a vision statement. It's going to be short, no more than a sentence. And it's going to tell someone who reads it what our special sauce is. What makes Hurstbourne Christian Church different? It's something we can put on flyers and brochures. That way, someone can see what our church is all about. Why they would join our church and not one of the other churches around us. The second statement that the vision committee is going to come up with is a mission statement. It's a little bit longer, uh, maybe three to four sentences. And it'll tell us a little more about what Hurstbourne Christian Church is about. It, it's something, so if someone read that vision statement and it's something they like, they can follow up and read our mission statement and learn a little bit more. Neither of these statements will be all-encompassing. I hate it when I see a vision statement that says, we are the best at all things for all people. 
because you're not. <laughs> I wouldn't walk into a pizza joint that served New York, Detroit, Chicago, uh, Pennsylvania, every other sort of pizza. I would assume they did all of them poorly, right? Uh, focus on what you do correctly, what you do well. Don't focus on everything. And that's what our vision statement will do. That's what our mission statement will do. And then both of those statements will be backed up by something that's frankly more important than the other two. It'll be backed up by our actions. The scripture we read today in Jeremiah was six verses, right? It was fairly short. In it we learned that Jeremiah had a special call for his life. Then, the longest book in the Bible spent 33,000 words describing that life. The vision statement is the start. It's what sets you on that journey. It's the actions and the follow-through that really matter. So as we come together today, and as we pray over the surveys in front of us, I want you to think about the journey we're undertaking, um, the journey we have five years from now. I think it's kind of important that in this scripture, God tells Jeremiah, you're too young. Because he's not too young. He's on the journey whenever God calls him on this journey. I don't think our church would often say that we're too young, would we? No, our church might say the opposite. We're too old to be thinking of a five-year plan. But we're not. That's the glory of a five-year plan. Even if we're not here five years from now, the plan still lives on. The vision continues whether we're part of it or not. As we come together and formulate what our church will become, it's not about us individually. It's about us as a collective, as a group of people following Christ. So I invite you today to, to truly think of what our vision will be, to, to intently pray over it in the coming weeks so that we can have a big vision reveal Sunday where we can announce to our church and the community at large what our special sauce, our special pizza, what is our call, and what makes Hurstbourne Christian Church unique. Now, will you pray with me? Almighty God, we come to you today not looking to know what the future will hold for us exactly, but wanting to come together as a community and plan for how we can build up your kingdom here, how we can lay the groundwork for five years from now. So we can find out what, what makes us here at Hurstborn Christian Church special. What is the vision that you have for us and our lives? We pray all this in your son's holy name. Amen.